Welcome to Switch Corner, my name is Alex and Sonic Frontiers, it's finally arrived on the Nintendo Switch, a platformer adventure promising the speed we expect to Sonic, blended with an open world vibe, but how does this all hold up on the Nintendo Switch hardware? Well that's what I'm here to find out in today's performance review, so with that hit subscribe, join us here for reviews and deals daily, and let's get started. If you are thinking about grabbing this one then consider using cornershop.gg for instant delivery email eShop credit. You will get 10% off at checkout using code CORNER. These they are instant delivery as well as via email. Like many then I've been curious to this one, they promise the same experience across all the platforms or at least for the most part, 60 frames per second on current gen along with a higher resolution, that's going to be then 30 frames per second on the Switch and an adaptive resolution targeting 720p. Today though we'll be taking a look at the opening hour or so of gameplay alongside a breakdown of the mechanics. Story first up in this one, it keeps things simple as would be traditionally expected of Sonic. Now I'm a huge fan of the name for sure and quickly it throws us into the mix. We are aboard a flight, things go wrong, we crash land and quickly we lose our friends that were aboard with us. Now we want to of course get them back. We awake though on this island, a mysterious voice greets us and it advises us we must collect the Chaos Emeralds on this island and kind of alludes to the fact that this may save our friends. Extremely simple setup this one but it's enough to have me ready to run at top speed through countless levels influenced by classic Sonic all alongside of course the aforementioned open worlds. Gameplay wise then and we are here with a 3D Sonic Adventure, honestly something that typically concerns me given the fact I grew up on 2D Sonic and I would say when the character makes a detour into 3D it's often of a lower quality outside of maybe a few gems, think for example Sonic Adventures on the Dreamcast or the more recent or at least it was re-released Sonic Colors, for me they captured the magic of what it meant to be a Sonic infused adventure. Thankfully though from the first hour or so of this one I will say it seems the team behind this they very much got that yes it has the open world aspect and a clear passion to attach a narrative to our hero but it also packs levels that are very much influenced by the sonic design that many of us know and love. In these moments they're essentially portals, we'll go ahead and collect keys to unlock the required emeralds. Literally though to give you an example we start in a level that's essentially green hill zone packed with bars to grind and loops to run it very much feels like they know exactly who their target audience is. What did confuse me though with the game I gotta be honest is on booting up the game gives you two difficulties and I went with what was called action mode, it seemed to be the preset for new players or at least that's how it described it but it also has a fast mode for what it described as being for veterans. Now as I said I've been playing Sonic since the very beginning now in 2D but I wasn't really sure if this mode was going to be for me. Honestly on reflection now after a couple of hours action mode it seems more than fast enough at this point. Frontiers then also unexpectedly features a skill tree. Here as we tackle enemies with a relatively simple homing attack or at least to open the game, they will be dropping rewards that can be converted for new moves. The initial unlock is going to be a cyclone maneuver which leaves a trail of destruction in your path. Again like I do want to point out here this was very much me testing how does it all perform on the Nintendo Switch but I feel like the loop is already quickly establishing itself and that is find basic environmental puzzles to reveal more of the map and kind of work your way through them, tackle enemies in the open world, take down larger bosses for keys and then eventually open portals to what I would again describe as think more traditional as Sonic with a linear path, complete enough of those and you will unlock what is an emerald gem. On that note then the enemies and honestly I've quickly faced maybe 5 or 6 battles within the first 30 to 45 minutes of this one and the IGN coverage that we all saw to promote the game it did more harm than good it seems it was way off the mark in what was in this world outside of this is the environment and that's really about it it's actually a lot more I guess busy than you may expect. 
I'm surprised to be saying this bit then as well, but the bosses, I almost get this air of think Sonic Shadow of the Colossus. One of the first is absolutely screen filling you all to wait for them to strike the ground before a wall of running up their arm to attack their weak spot at the very top of the character. It's just a very cool design and a good use of Sonic's abilities. Outside of that for gameplay, I do want to get to the performance, but I want to say here, I was there for the original Sonic on the Mega Drive or the Genesis, dependent on your region, but over the years, kind of been left disappointed with the 3D Sonic outings. For once, I can say I'm genuinely excited to get further into this one. The speed is there, the open world leads to intrigue, and the levels for the Chaos Emeralds, nice throwbacks that embody the speed and the agility that you would expect from this classic character. Graphically this far, for the open world, it's a little rough around the edges, not to say it's bad, but it's relatively basic environments. And then the enemies packed in, a little on the bland side but at this point, they try to kind of reflect a metallic alien-like creature, but I would guess here, repetition is going to be the name of the game. The resolution then, it's holding steady with around 720p, and that was very much anticipated. The open world though, basically this far, can be summed up as kind of, you know, rock formations, vegetation and the occasional launch pad, spring and grind bar. What is very noticeable in these moments though is a huge amount of popping. That said though, from what I'm seeing online, that's very much the case no matter the platform you are playing on. That said though, getting to the level, so to speak, murals around the world and here it fares much better with fun spins on what I'd call classic locations. I also really like the cutscenes at this point that are packed in. I've also noticed, of course, fluctuations with resolution as we do get to you know larger buses or locations again then the popping i wouldn't say that carries over to these individual levels but there's definitely the other texture here and there that you will notice frame rate wise then and again they are out here targeting a locked 30 frames per second with a lower resolution that does adapt a respectful aim and it's what i would describe as nearly there basically but not locked it does fluctuate but it's not perfect as you can see in my footage today in the background in levels the emerald runs for example it's pretty spot on and that's impressive given the speed but in the open world it is targeting that 30 it gets there a decent amount of time but it does fluctuate i noticed on larger fisters enemies it was dropping as low as 27 now does that impact the gameplay? Honestly, I wouldn't have noticed all that much. It's not a game demanding, you know, complex commands. And it's close enough in regards to exploration that I really didn't notice all that much. The audio this far then, the levels are a bit almost a 90s like techno vibe with the, you know, individual runs. And then the open world, it's going for something a little more somber. The attacks sound good though, and the movement sounds like a reasonable throwback to what Sonic is known for. The voice acting, that's going to take some getting used to. It's no doubt going to feature more than I'm used to from the character, or at least it feels that way in the opening moments. But we will see as the adventure goes on. It just didn't quite sound like I remembered. So that is just a very early peek at Sonic Frontiers on the Nintendo Switch. The performance, it's not bad at all. The combination of open world and classic seems unique, and it's doing enough at this point to intrigue me. For the transparency as well, like I'm 35 years old, grew up with this character, and I've spent years being disappointed by the majority of releases attached to the name. So this, right now, it is definitely refreshing. Refuse as well are this far, they've been relatively positive, which is exciting. It's not only a character that I've trained myself now to almost expect the worst from, but this is the first time in a long time where I am genuinely excited. The worst case, I think what we have here is basically a solid formula for the future of the Sonic series, and that's really, honestly, not all that bad a place to be. Will you be picking up Frontiers though? Let me know in the comments down below. With that then, like, hit subscribe. Join us here for reviews and deals daily, and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.